SACS, the symbolic aggregate approximation for time series anomaly detection. First question is what is SACS? SACS is a methodology for taking a time series and reducing it to a symbol inside a fixed symbol space. Uh, I, I, I fixed the string of letters that are drawn from a small alphabet. So in, in, in our examples here, we'll use a three letter alphabet with an eight letter SACS word. Now, SACS was invented by Dr. Amy Kelly at the University of California at Riverside about 2002, along with his team of graduate students, and has been in the academic community quite vigorously ever since, although not many commercial applications have been found uh, for it as yet. Uh, it allows time series to be searched and matched because it uses a symbol. You can use standard programmatic techniques to manipulate time series. Now, how do we obtain a SACS word? Well, the first thing you do is you reduce the time series to a piecewise aggregate approximation, which averages the components of the time series into a fixed number of data boxes, which will correspond to the SACS letters that we use. We then <coughs> z-normalize it and divide the normal distribution into equally equal area sections. So we use the quantile to divide the distribution of our SACS word into the various letters that we have. So in this case, we have an example of a time series being reduced to an, a three-letter alphabet, eight-component SACS word. By the way, this slide was uh, it's by Jessica Lynn and Dr. Amy Kiel at the University of California, Riverside, and it's used with their permission. Now, how do you find an anomaly once you have one of these things? Well, the basic idea is that you have each SACS word exists in a SAC space, which is a fixed size. In our example here, we have 6,561 possible SAC words. So in an even distribution of those SAC words, you would expect a 1 in 6,561 probability of a SAC word occurring. Well, they don't do that as you feed them through, through time series. Each SAC word is an index into that space, and I can count them. And so as I count them, I have a notion of how rare or normal a particular SACS word might be. And I can use that to compute how anomalous the situation is because I know the total number of time series I've seen, the num or number of instances of a particular SACS word, and the space in which it exists, which is sufficient uh, information to compute a p-value of how probable it is that I will have seen so few, or in other words, how anomalous a time series might have been. Now, p-value isn't the only metric that you want to compute here, or even the best one. We use it as an example, because everyone knows what it is. That, that's the end. <laughs>